Hi, welcome to our webinar. Uh, my name is Jenna Ziesenhen, and I'm one of the co-presidents of the Association of Women in Business. And my name is Hannah Kadish. I am on the Association of Women in Business, or AWIB cabinet, and I'm in an admissions role. Hi, I'm Susan Sasu. I'm also co-chair for admissions with Hannah. <laughs> Great. So we'll start by telling you a little bit about ourselves and then more about AWIB, the club as a whole, and then jump into a Q&A with all of you. So you'll see anytime you want to ask a question, just look at the right side of your screen, screen and there's somewhere you can type it in and ask the question there. Um, so I'm a second year MBA student here at Fuqua. I'm originally from Georgia. And uh, prior to Fuqua, I worked um, for the ambassador of Sri Lanka in Washington, DC, and then for a small solar energy company in Chicago. I uh, spent my summer working for Deloitte Strategy and Operations Consulting in New York. And um, yeah, I'll be going back there to New York after school. Oh, and at school, I'm involved. <laughs> um, I am one of the co-presidents of AWeb, so that is a big, uh, a big involvement this year. But I've spent a lot of time working with other clubs and organizations. Um, I did, I've done Fuqua on board, working with a local nonprofit board, as well as FCCP, the Fuqua Client Consulting Practicum, where you work on a consulting project with a client um, for class credit. And I've been involved with the consulting, energy, um, tech, wine club, a number of other clubs here on campus as well. Excellent. Yeah. So my name is Hannah. I am a second year as well. I'm originally from Philadelphia. And prior to Fuqua, I was working at an executive search firm on their human capital consulting arm. And I did that for about four years before coming back to school at Fuqua. This past summer, I worked in marketing and brand management at Procter & Gamble on the Global Olympics team. It was a really great experience, and I'll be going back full time at the end of the year. And also, like Jenna, involved with a myriad of things at Fuqua, including um, AWIB and the admissions role. I'm also a career fellow. I'm an admissions fellow. I am on the NBA Games Cabinet, which raises money for Special Olympics. I'm also um, TAing a few different classes and a few other things, which keeps me very busy. <laughs> Um, hi everyone, I'm Suzanne Sasu, so I'm from Accra, Ghana. I'm proud to Fuqua, I worked in Unilever doing um, a bit of brand management and customer marketing as well. Um, this summer I was doing healthcare marketing at Cardinal Health. Um, I have the opportunity to go back, but I'm still exploring my options, so white space, we'll see. Um, on campus I'm involved in quite a number of things. I'm an admissions fellow, um, I'm also a co-fellow. Um, on the way with cabinets, obviously. <laughs> um, I'm also involved in the Business in Africa Club, um, and I also TA a couple of classes. Um, so happy to be here and answer all your questions. Yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about AWIB first. Um, it's one of the largest clubs on campus, and AWIB is really a professional development organization that is committed to providing um, personal and career and leadership support to the women on campus as well as um, fostering a dialogue on campus around the issues and challenges facing women in business, um, and especially focused on cultivating a really strong community and fostering connections across um, classes and across the broader Duke and broader Durham community uh, for women here as well as male allies. Um, we have a number of initiatives happening throughout the year. so. Uh, currently, right now, at the beginning of the year, there's a big push on offering career support for uh, women on campus. So we have a lot of career-related programming from a range of industries and functions. So really uh, supplementing the support provided by the Career Center here and offering unique opportunities for um, you know, new perspectives into types of careers and opportunities as well as um, networking opportunities too. So in addition to that, on the corporate side, there is a lot of community building between first year and second year women. And we've had a number of smaller, we call them real talks events, where uh, f second year women host first year women at their homes uh, for casual conversation around various topics in their career development support. Um, and in addition to that, we have a lot of big events throughout the year. Um, on the admissions side, which they'll talk about in a little while, we have a weekend for women uh, coming up November 2nd through 4th, which is an amazing event, uh, really the highlight of the year for us and for many prospective students visiting. And I'll let them dive a little deeper into that during the Q&A. Um, additionally, we have uh, Blue Devil Weekends, where prospective students come here to Fuqua and we play a huge role in supporting on those big events, which are awesome as well. Um, 
we have leadership development and leadership programming throughout the year, hosting amazing women uh, from across industries and across the world coming to Fuqua and talking about their experience. So we're always doing that, and it really culminates in a, a larger leadership conference in the spring. Um, and that's another big event. Um, we have, in addition to the admissions and career and corporate opportunities, we have um, let's see, constant membership and community engagement, which I talked about briefly, so that's just a core part of fostering these relationships. Uh, and we do have a male allies program, so that's focused on engaging our uh, male counterparts in our classes uh, and helping them understand uh, the issues and challenges that women face and, you know, it, encouraging the dialogue with them and helping them be allies out in the workplace beyond just Fuqua as well. So uh, there's a lot going on here. It's a really exciting club to be a part of um, and it's, it's been a great experience for all of us. So uh, we're happy to talk more about it as well. Uh, let's see what next. Maybe so to start off, we can all talk about I um, mean what drew us to Fuqua. Yeah, why we chose Fuqua. Yeah, um, I can I can kick that off. So I think awesome. there's um, there's three big buckets when I think about why I chose Fuqua in the first place. And the first is from an academic standpoint, Fuqua is not just sitting in a classroom and reading a textbook. There's so many experiential learning opportunities to really develop yourself both inside and outside the classroom. And that was something that was really important to me. And that's clear from our level of involvement in extracurriculars and the fact that you can have leadership roles really, you know, day one of your first, of fall one as a first year. And that was something that was very, very important to me so that I develop myself not only academically from a business and financial acumen standpoint, but also from a leadership and management standpoint as well. So that was one big thing. The second is the, the social, the level of social engagement in Fuqua. And I think it's really great, and I'll have Jenna talk a little bit more about Durham's community, but a lot of, a lot of students live in one of two apartment buildings that are right across the street from each other. And this really fosters a lot of social interactions and allows you to really get close with your peers and your classmates and develop a bond that I think will carry me throughout the rest of my life. And then the third and final aspect is really the team collaboration and team Fuqua aspect. And as I'm sure a lot of you have probably read on the website a lot about our Team Fuqua and our collaborative environment. And I, I know it might look a little, a little hoaxy as you're reading it, but once you're here on campus, you live it every single day. And nothing is done in a silo here. Everything is done on a team. And that's really the most productive, efficient way to get things done. And that's a skill set that I've carried through my summer internship where nothing was done by myself. And I really leaned on my, on my cross-functionals to work to work over the summer so those are those were my kind of three big reasons and i'll let you guys kind of add to that as well yeah yeah um yeah. i mean i mean i totally agree with everything that hannah said um yeah. to add on to the team element um i knew that um the mba program was you no know, i mean it's really really challenging and tough so what was critical for me was to find a school where um culturally i fit in um and i thrive in team environment um so i was really looking for a school that there wasn't a marketing gimmick, like Hannah said, that you know, was team-based, um, but then I actually saw it. Um, and so the first time I actually came across Duke, Duke wasn't even on my radar at all, until I attended an MBA fair, um, where Duke and other schools were at. Um, and then I just saw the interaction between the few people and the person from admissions, and it was totally different from how the other schools were interacting with each other. And so that really attracted me to Fuqua, and so I started learning more and I basically just fell in love with Fuqua, um, and then here I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think a similar experience for me, yeah. too. Um, you know, it's one thing to read about everything yeah. online, but when I actually visited Fuqua, I knew instantly that this was the place for me. Um, you can feel it in the energy here with the community and um, how just warm and down-to-earth and genuine everyone is. Uh, it, it's real, and it's an amazing place to be. Uh, in addition to that, I, I kind of I only applied here because I knew this was the right fit. I wanted to be in a community like Durham, and I think it has a lot of unique things to offer. Um, you know, comparing to other business school opportunities here in the United States. So, you know, it, like Hannah was mentioning, it's pretty unique to be in a relatively small town where this community here is you know, a core part of everyone's lives. And if you want it to be, you have this constant, you know, social community and, you know, beyond academics. And it's not like everyone's just leaving campus and, you know, 
going off into the city to have their own lives. It's really, you know, beyond just campus, everyone has a deeper connection to each other's lives. Um, Durham is an amazing and very, very cool small town. It's part of the Research Triangle Park area, the Triangle in North Carolina. So uh, we're within 20 or 30 minutes of both Chapel Hill and Raleigh, which have a lot to offer, um, you know, both in terms of, you know, intellectual capital and the, in technology companies that exist here as well as um, food and culture and you know fun breweries awesome restaurants uh, amazing nature if you like hiking this is an awesome place to be and you're three hours from the beach three hours from the mountains uh, it's a really really awesome community the weather is awesome yeah it is <laughs> it's so 80, kind of 80 and sunny right now <laughs> that's awesome so if you haven't visited yet you really should come we would love to to meet all of you and I'm sure you would love it here too so we actually have a question in now. Um, so what's been your favorite part of being involved with AWIP? I can kick that off. I think, and I can speak to one, I think in working in the admissions role, I feel incredibly fortunate. Like this is pretty much the best cabinet position that you can have at Fuqua. And I'm saying that in a really you know authentic, genuine way. I really feel like I'm, I'm just so excited to be in this role. Um, but one event that kind of really resonated with me from last year is that we had Mary Barra, who's the CEO of General Motors. She was on campus last year because her son or daughter goes to Big Duke, Duke undergrad. And so the business school had, um, she had either reached out to the business school or we had reached out to her. And she ended up coming onto campus for one of our distinguished speaker series. And she came and spoke. And then she also had a breakfast with about 20 women who were AWIB, AWIB members. And it was just such a unique opportunity to be able to have breakfast with one of the most impressive female CEOs in the world, in my opinion. And it was a really intimate environment. We all were able to ask questions and have you know, a thoughtful dialogue with her. And that was just something that I wouldn't have been able to do if I wasn't in AWIB. And so it's events like that that you know, I really try to take advantage of and um, that AWIB offers us as females in business school. Yeah, absolutely. That was such a cool event last year. Yeah. Um, Huh, I don't know. I'm trying. To, that was the highlight of my <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. really cool. I mean, I can talk about mine. Um, I think you no, know, like Hannah, I worked on the admissions cabinet last year as well, and I think for me the biggest thing was um, the weekend for women, where we had almost 170 women coming on campus and interacting with us and meeting us. And this year, I saw several of them come back, like because of yeah. weekend for women, they came back and are here as first years. And it was super fulfilling for me to see that you know all our connections and interactions actually yielded in them coming here and being part of the FUCA community. So that was like a really special moment for me. <laughs> yeah, and we can we can we can just talk about that week weekend really briefly. It's coming up in this November. Hopefully, some of you have already um, already committed to coming in RSVP. Yes, and I actually went to the weekend as a prospective student, and it was one of the most phenomenal weekends of that year for me. It really solidified why I chose Fuqua, and I had applied early action, so I was already in by that point. So they didn't even need to sell me because I was already <laughs> committed to coming. But it really just reinforced why I had applied and. I ended up meeting my my now best friend and roommate at that weekend and a few of other girls who are in my in my tight social group at Fuqua and so it's really unique because a lot of the girls that you'll meet during that weekend you will end up seeing coming back and you guys share kind of this unique bond that um, that not everyone has and so a, a quick breakdown of what the weekend is is that you come in on Thursday night and Friday and Saturday there's a whole host of programming that we have for you. It's pretty light and it's just for you to really get an idea of what Fuqua is all about. You'll meet a ton of current students, have a lot of different conversations and really get to understand you know, what not only the academic program is but what we do outside of academics in terms of extracurriculars, experiential learning and then also get a taste of our social life and get to experience you know, even some of the food that we have um, in Durham will they'll cater that food in so that you guys really get a full picture of what we how we live our lives every day. So um, it's really a fantastic. I really cannot say enough things about that, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm slightly biased because I'm a planning it and b went as a perspective. But I really do think that it's it's a great way to check out what we're all about and. It also is, it's all female. So it's, you meet a ton of fantastic women and we'll have similar numbers again this year. So 170 of you will, will be here and we can't wait to meet you all. Yeah, I wish I had gone as a prospective student. <laughs> yeah. I missed out on the opportunity, but as soon as I came here, I heard all about it and kept hearing over and over from people who said that was such a like breakthrough part of their experience in their business school search because it really solidified um, 
you know, that feeling of home here and, and such a connection to the school and to the other women here at school. So uh, I wish I could have gone, but I'm excited to be involved in uh, helping and planning now. Um, I guess I'll talk a little more about some of the fun, more uh, professional side of AWIB. Um, we really do a great job of jumping in early on and building connections between first and second year women and kind of offering career support quickly as soon as things are getting um, you know, really busy around here and everyone's hitting the ground running but AWIB hosts some events before any of the official recruiting starts that enables women to really explore career opportunities and have candid conversations with uh, women and alumni from all levels of uh, their careers. So we have a Women in Finance and Consulting Night and a Women in Technology event uh, very early before anything started and uh, everything from you know partners and firms to recent Fuqua grads who have just started in their careers. And it's really a nice opportunity to have very comfortable, candid conversations and Q&A sessions about what it's like to have a career in those fields, uh, what are the challenges of working in primarily male-dominated environments, um, and how have they been able to you know, support each other and succeed there. So I think I really appreciated that early on, and I, it's, it's a nice part of uh, you know, working with the club and being able to offer that so early. And then on the you know, more informal side, uh, in terms of community engagement, you know, we're, we're plugged into the Durham community and helping with community service in addition to just you know, constant events between the first year and second year women to really build those friendships early. So you get to know each other. You feel like, you know, the first years can come to the second year women with their questions uh, throughout the year because they they're friends uh, from day one. Yeah, and for example, I had two weeks ago. I had um, first years over my apartment to have one of the marketing marketing real talks. So talking about brand management. And it's when you're a first year, it's really hard to navigate the whole recruiting space, and it's very overwhelming. You have a lot of different companies who are coming on campus, which is one of the kind of amazing things about business schools that you get to really flirt with all these different organizations that are Fortune 500 companies, some of the most impressive companies in the world. But it's also very overwhelming because how do you pick between all of these great options? And so being able to leverage the second years who have gone through that process is a really fantastic, fantastic opportunity for first years to kind of figure out what they want to be when they. Um, when they grow up, essentially. So I had, a, you know, 10 maybe first years come to my apartment with a few other second years who had recruited for brand management. And we just were honest with them and had real conversations about how the recruiting process went, what was our, what was our decision making points for various companies. And they were so, they were so grateful. And, you know, then now I see these people in the hall and I'm able to say hi and have a real conversation with them because I know, you know, I know more about them and it's a great way to kind of facilitate that interaction. And I know as a, when I was a first year, it was a great event for me. And that's, that's where I started really making friendships with the second years. And I found that really valuable. Um, so next question, um, how did you balance um, the rigor of the program with you no know, crafting time for your family or partners? If you have some. Yeah, that's a tough one. It, <laughs> I think everyone struggles with figuring that out. Um, it's a constant struggle, I'm sure. But you know, I think before even getting and starting business school, it's important to just remind yourself then and continue to remind yourself that it's always going to be a tough balancing act and you're never going to be able to do everything 100 percent all the time uh, so you know be in touch with yourself and your needs and be willing to like flex and you know give more in some area of your life in that moment and kind of sacrifice some of your time on other things because you know you need to be well rested you need to be your best self and you shouldn't be enjoying this experience too because it is awesome um, so it, you know it, it's tough but uh, and having so many cool people around all the time makes it tough to say no to social things of course but the, you know the yeah. FOMO is real uh, <laughs> very, very real but uh, yeah that, that's a tough thing but you, you figure it out yeah and I would say too I think it's really being true to your own values and what you need to prioritize and whether that's family whether that's working out whether that's um, you know recruiting or what have you making sure that you know what your priorities are and then holding those holding yourself accountable to those so for example I'm a big runner and I remember going into my first semester as a first year 
Um, and that's the busiest, as you know, kind of to give you an idea, the busiest you'll ever be in business school is your first semester is a first year. I think we can say that confidently. So, yeah. <laughs> and so you really do not have much downtime. And this is going to be true for any program that you go to. Um, so one of the things that I was, that was a non-negotiable for me was working out and continuing to run. So I would wake up at 6 a.m. and go to the gym. And I did that four or five days a week. And I held myself accountable to that. That's and amazing. it kept me. Yeah, it was <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah, always I dark that. when I woke <laughs> up. <laughs> <That's> nice. <laughs> nice. But that, you know, I think it's just important to understand what's a priority for you, and then not not hold, not fall apart in terms of that, and really holding yourself to that. And you know, it's you're not going to be able to do everything. I wasn't definitely wasn't training for a marathon at that time, and I just leveled my expectations going in, knowing that it was going to be crazy. And then um, the. The social aspect is is very real, and there's going to be a lot of things that you can always be doing. But I also think you kind of once you kind of get into the swing of things, you realize there will always be another thing. So if you need to miss one thing to kind of take a, some personal time, everyone gets that, and not everyone can go to everything. So it does have a way of working itself out, I would say. Yeah, and Fuqua really is a great place for families and for partners. Mm -hmm. I think we have a reputation for being. Uh, a special place for that in that the partners and the families are always welcome in the Fuqua community events and social events. Um, AWIB also is involved in supporting Fuqua moms. So we do, in each of our class, we have a handful of amazing women who are going to school and being a mom at the same time. Uh, Which and, is amazing. Yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> it's, it's so awesome. Um, Crazy. We have, and so um, there's a motherhood cabinet within AWIB that really works to understand the needs of those moms and provide opportunities for support and advice coming in if you're looking for, you know, setting up your life here with your children and where they need to go to school and how that should all uh, pan out. It's a great community for that and there are a lot of uh, mechanisms for support both within AWIB and through the Fuqua Partners um, as well. So it's a really, it's, we offer a lot of support with that. Yeah. Um, I think for me, the most important thing was just staying connected to my family back in Ghana. So I remember I actually put it on my PDP that I'll call my mom every week. That's and your development <laughs> plan that yeah. you'll make as a yeah. first year. Um, and I think that helped keep me accountable to it. So at least I try to call her every every week, usually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I use tra whenever I'm in transit, I always end up calling someone yeah. who yeah. and I'm and they're and they're always like are you in transit right now I'm like, yep well that's the only time I have so that's how it's gonna be <laughs> and like she said it was her PDP so when you start here you really spend a lot of time reflecting on your own goals and your you know current leadership abilities and uh, how you want to develop them during your time here so you know it's nice to take that time to reflect on you know your strengths and weaknesses and your goals and then what you want to ensure you do throughout your time here and then you can always keep referring back to that um, you know to make sure that you're holding true to it and modify as needed and, and it's, it's a nice reminder of um, your priorities okay so we have another question what are some of the interesting things to do in the Durham area huh. <laughs> oh there's a lot yeah. Um, I, go, go yeah, I already started <laughs> with this I'll let you take it from there um, I think one of the one of the things that I was very surprised about is that there's some really fantastic restaurants, and you're probably sitting there being like, "What do you mean fantastic restaurants in Durham? Like, I don't really understand that." But it's actually a huge foodie town, and so um, I'm actually going to one of the nicer ones tonight called Mothers and Sons, which is a really good Italian restaurant. And there's a bunch of other really fantastic restaurants that I've started to explore, especially now that I'm um, a second year and have a little bit more, or <laughs> supposed to have a little bit more free time, but sometimes that doesn't always work that way. But mm -hmm. um, but overall, I think the restaurant scene is, is A plus and kind of piggybacking off the restaurant scene. It's also a great brewery scene. So um, normally on Saturdays when the weather's nice, people will head to one of the breweries and just hang out there for the afternoon. So um, there's definitely a plethora of eating and drinking, which may or may not be surprising for a college <laughs> town. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And like I mentioned before, the outdoors aspect, you know, whether you're lounging outside at a brewery, enjoying that, um, or if you just have a few minutes to run through Duke Gardens, which are absolutely beautiful, mm, and, mm -hmm. you know, right through campus, um, or 10 minutes to drive to, or even less, to drive to the trails around here. It's really, it's an awesome place to get outdoors, and, it, you know, whatever your favorite types of hob hobbies are, you can do them outside when it's beautiful, um, and, it, you know, it's it's easy to do, too, so it's, it's a very cool place to be mm -hmm. yeah. and I second the breweries and restaurants. <laughs> awesome 
Um, and also, if you are into art, there's a couple of really nice um, museums and um, artsy things to do on campus as well and around Durham. So, cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you have any tips to give the prospective women as they go through the application process? Yeah, I think it's it's a very trying process, and I think um, on the whole, it's one of it's a really good process to go through because it really does reinforce why you want to go to business school, and you really have to think about you know your short and long term goals, which by the way are subject to change once you get here, and that's very okay. Um, you know, you could really think that your path is leading you one way, and you know, for me, my my goals ended up changing because I learned about new opportunities here that I hadn't previously been exposed to, and that's completely allowed. So. Um, so don't feel like your short and long-term goals, you have to stay wedded to those, although it really does help you think about you know, what, what you, how you want your career to progress. Um, one thing I'll say is, is really try to visit every single school that you go to. I think that's, what, that's really what helped me in the decision-making decision point. Um, and make sure you talk to people. You know, feel free to, you'll probably have our contact details after this, and feel free to reach out to us. And you know, I talk to, I've talked to a bunch of prospective students about you know, why, why I chose FICWA, and then also answered any questions that they had. And that's one of the best ways to learn about these different schools, and including FICWA. We're a school that has a very distinct culture, and it, it's for a lot of people, but it's also not for some people. And that's OK, too. Like, you need to figure out what, what is the right fit for you. So my biggest piece of advice is, is go to all of these schools do your research, talk to people, because a website can only tell you so much. And as soon as you get on campus, I think it, you either fall in love with the school or you say, you know what, I'm glad I came because I'm going to look elsewhere. That's good advice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess with our, with our application, we do the 25 random things, right? So I think um, a lot of people get to that point and then get really nervous and they overthink it and you know, you can just dwell on that forever uh, because it's kind of an unusual approach to an application. But just honestly be yourself, like go through things that just come to you naturally. You know, you don't need to really overanalyze that or be too critical or be too guarded. Like you don't want to, you know, show too much of your true self because that's the most important thing is to just be authentically you and, you know, share whatever like comes naturally that you would want to share as interesting, you know, random things about yourself. Should we share one of our 25 facts to give them an idea of how? I'll, sh I'll share one of mine that is, um, I use it as a fun fact me. now as well. Um, so in sixth grade, I broke both of my arms at the same time rollerblading, and I had neon yellow casts for um, six weeks. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so haven't haven't that's touched rollerblades since. That's so that's fun fact. Wow. Yeah. But it's oh like gosh. very random. Like that's who a good one. Who breaks that them never both happens. at the same time? <laughs> it's a skill. That's a skill. It definitely is a skill. But that just gives you an idea of kind of yeah. what we, <laughs> what they shouldn't. But then on the flip side, there should be some that are more, you know, kind of like another one of mine was that I've I've run three marathons, and um, that I think is a really good way. It's a really good self discipline um, thing to train for, and so in terms of like what's in it for Fuqua on the other like what does that mean for Fuqua you know I'm I'm disciplined and I will I if I say I'm going to do something I'm going to do it and I'm going to get it done so I think you know as you're kind of crafting these 25 things yes some of them should be like I broke my arm, both arms at the same time <laughs> but then some of the other ones should be a little bit more serious and you know what does that say about you and what you're going to bring to the table at Fuqua yeah absolutely mm -hmm. so um I can share one of mine so I actually had a food blog in Ghana Mm, um, cool. So well, so I'm planning on starting a food blog here. Nice. Now that I have some free-ish yeah. time I'll in take second some pictures year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so again, back to Hannah's point. That was like one of the things um, I was super passionate about, and I shared my 25 things. But you could also tell how I could contribute to the Fuka community by doing that. So just do a like nice job of tying your fun facts back into how you can contribute to the community. Yeah. We have a saying. Yeah. We have a saying that we learn in as a first year called WIFM, W-I-F-M, and that's what's in it for me. So you know, as you're, and that's as the as think of the adcom as the people saying, well, what's in it for us? You know, what are what are interesting and skills are you going to bring here? Because Fuqua is such a diverse community, and that's I think where they get a lot of you know learn a lot about people is through these 25 things. And so they want to make sure they're bringing the most you know people who are going to add a lot of value and be very engaged because that's how all of us live our lives. Everyone brings something unique to the table. I would say. Yeah, definitely. 
Hmm. All right, Jenna, what's... You're not getting <laughs> <tired of this. laughs> I know. I was like, I... Ooh, I that's a tough one. It was, like, it was like 10 years ago. Yeah, I, honestly, <laughs> tough to remember. I think, yeah, mine was absolutely a mix like that. I'm a huge music lover. I've probably been to, you know, over 200 concerts. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, so <laughs> I think that was like... I've been to like yeah. four. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one. But then I had others that kind of wove in, like, things about my family and how close I am mm-hmm. with my younger sister, who's currently in the Peace Corps, and, nice. you know, things about, like, what's inspired me and, and what is closest to me in my life. and you know, what kind of personality I am. I, I, I think one of mine was, like, I'm never an innocent bystander. I always feel the need to, like, step into a situation, whether it's appropriate or safe or what, <laughs> and, like, get involved and, and help people uh, when I come across something like that. Um, you know, and then one was, like, I always prefer bourbon. So, you know, hey, <laughs> so I was kind of worried about that one. But it, were, it was okay. It wasn't too... Too strange. They drink a lot of bourbon in Cincinnati, where I was this summer. And it's so, <laughs> so not for me. It's just not for me. Okay, so I think that's all the questions we have. Um, do you want to wait maybe a couple more seconds? See if yeah, we can we also get... talk. We can also think of questions that I would, if I was a perspective, that I would want to ask. Um, what's the recruiting process like? Hmm. Busy. <laughs> yeah, really busy. Um, I think it can be overwhelming yeah. if you want to explore everything, um, although you certainly can explore a lot of things. I know I did, and maybe I was on the broader end of scoping out a few different career paths, but it's really helpful if you take time before starting business school to reflect on you know, your interests, your preferences, your passions, um, and you know, even if it's vague about the type of environment you like in a a workplace uh, versus, you know, more specific ones. I think it, it's important to have some, you know, personal alignment on what matters to you with that. So then you can try to start narrowing those things down early on, uh, because pretty quickly it's like many events every night, so many cool opportunities to learn and explore. But you don't want to wear yourself out completely. Yeah, and I think kind of playing off of this, you know, a big question that we also get a lot of the times is. What should we doing? What should we be doing now before school? You know, can we start the recruiting process now? And the short answer is no, absolutely not. You know, just enjoy your time. Once you guys get into school, it's a really unique time where you're still making a paycheck and you're you know you're about to have this incredible experience. So take full advantage of that. Go on a vacation. Um, you know, a lot of people who are interested in consulting will ask me, should I start casing? And no, because you're once you get to school and <laughs> Jenna can, not. Jenna can <laughs> no. who did the whole consulting thing can confirm that. But you know, they will set you up with all of the skills that you need when you come in as a first year. And in fact, I think it could end up being you know being more hurtful if you don't learn the frameworks the right way. So you'll you'll learn all of that. So my advice is just start thinking about what you know what. What makes you excited? What gets you excited every every day? What are the things about your job that you like? And then what are the things that made you go back to business school that you're looking for in something in some other career type? So I think it's important to start thinking about that. And I'll say that from a recruiting standpoint and then also from a club involvement standpoint at FEQA. So a lot of the times you'll hear people saying, oh my god, I overextended myself. I'm involved in too much because that's very easy to do here. People will always overextend themselves, and um, one could argue that we have overextended (laughs) ourselves because there's just so many things that you want to be involved in. And if I had to do it over, I would say yes to everything that I'm currently doing. So, um, But one piece of advice that I, I tried as a first year was just being thoughtful about what I wanted to be involved in. I knew I wanted to do AWIB admissions, and I knew I wanted to be involved in admissions as an admissions coordinator, which is another leadership role that you can have as a first year. So those were the two that I really pursued. And then second year, I took on more. But as a first year, that was all I was involved with. And that was super helpful. And someone had given me that advice. So I, I really took that to heart. And it ended up really, really making me more successful as a first year. Okay, we have some more questions now. So, what are the other clubs in Fuca that work on the same, I guess, platform as AWIB? Um, what other clubs would you recommend for women at Fuca? Um, I mean, depending on your background. So, for example, I'm involved in the Business in Africa Club because that's my background. I'm African. I'm also involved in Blimbao, <coughs> which is a black and Latinos organization, again, because of my background. 
Um, so I think it depends on like your interest. Um, I'm also part of the culinary club um, because I'm a huge foodie. Um, so again, depending on your background and you know, what you're passionate about. You know. And I think one, one caveat too is that involvement in saying you're a member of a club can mean, you know, there's a very wide spectrum. There can be cabinet involvement, which is a leadership role. So for that, I'd, I'd recommend as a first year, you know, really having one to two cabinet cabinet roles and then you can be involved in clubs and you you get their newsletter every week and there's various events that you can go to so I'm, I'm definitely in the marketing club um, I'm also in the wine club which is probably one of the better yeah, <laughs> better clubs on on campus um, and then I'm also in the media entertainment sports club I'm in um, the general management club so my level of involvement varies depending upon what I'm interested in going, but it's not like these clubs outside of the cabinet meet weekly or monthly, et cetera. It just means that you're on their distribution list, you have access to all of the events that they're hosting. There's a lot of club collaboration. Um, one of the unique things about AWIB, and Jenna can probably speak to this more so than me, is that it's it's the one of the largest, it is the largest club on campus. I, one of them, I think not number one, but I'm not sure. Well, it's Within very, the top three <laughs> largest, we're huge. And it's yeah. four, I mean, it's 400 plus members, yeah. which if you know, if you've read our demographics, that's pretty much the size of one class. So we have a huge member base. And so there's no, uh, there's no other club that quite is a professional club that spans, you know, so many different activities because there'll be the consulting club or the marketing club and those have more siloed roles. So one of the nice things about AWIB is that it cross cuts all of these clubs and really partners with, I would say, every single one of them. And it also partners with a myriad of employers. So I think that's a really unique um, value prop that AWIB has. I yeah, know, and I think Fuqua is unique in that you don't have to pay to join clubs. There's no membership fees. You just, um, you know, that's part of being here at Fuqua, it's included, so you just join anything that interests you and you can kind of connect early on on the online platform, find out what's happening with the various clubs, and like Hannah said, you can choose any level of involvement, whether you want to be a leader in one club uh, or if, you know, your level of involvement in AWIB is like a attending community events every once in a while or if there's some, you know, amazing woman speaker coming or a certain company hosting a small uh, networking reception, then you can pick and choose what matters to you and what you want to enjoy. Um, and there's no preference for more involved members versus less involved. It's really just um, here for you to, you know, take advantage of in whatever way is meaningful to you and for you to potentially have an impact on the community um, through AWIB in whatever way is important to you as well. And I think uh, we do collaborate with a lot of clubs and that's a, a very fun part. Um, and there are just so many amazing clubs on campus doing a lot of very cool and very impactful things here. So you get to explore that as soon as you get to campus. Um, and you know you can kind of fluctuate in and out uh, depending on their various events or um, initiatives that are happening. Great, great. We have a lot um, of questions. Yeah, so. now we have yeah, a lot of questions. <laughs> Um, so can you talk about some of the global opportunities? I'm looking at you, Hannah. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, so last year I did, um, you'll hear a lot about the word gate, and you'll probably be like, what is this gate thing? So gate is the global academic travel experience, I believe, um, and it is, it is a class. You get course credit for it, and you decide there's three or four options per year of which gate trip you want to go on. They have, um, the, the big ones are China, South Africa, Argentina, and this year they may have gotten approval to do Cuba. They were supposed to do it last year, but something with the embassy happened. Um, but essentially, it's a class that meets during the quarter. So we meet once a week, and you really just learn about, so I did South Africa, and so in spring two of last year, the class met once a week, and I just got to learn about South Africa's culture and the different, um, the kind of the history of the of the country and various um, various business opportunities there as well. And then you actually go to South Africa with a group of like 30 or so of your classmates, and uh, it's led by a professor that's a non-FUQA professor, which is kind of a nice way to get to know people outside of the FUQA community. And you go to South Africa, and it's it's definitely a, a trip that has both pleasure and business, and more heavy on the pleasure. and. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, although the business opportunities are really fantastic, so we did company visits where we went to Google, BCG, a local impact investing firm, the equivalent of Pixar in South Africa, and it was so fascinating because for companies like Google and BCG, they're American-based companies. Their headquarters is in the states, and I know about what what kind of projects that they work on. But when you go to 
one of their offices abroad, it's totally different, the types of things that they're working on. And we really got to see those companies through a South African lens. And the types of projects that they're working on are so different than what they're doing in the States. So in terms of fostering a global mindset, that was really helpful in terms of me seeing you know, globalization in, in real time and really understanding the different challenges that come with a company that's global and how their company has to adapt to different markets. And then we also did a lot of really fun things. We went on a four or five day safari, which was one of the highlights of the trip. It was unbelievable. And then just got to really know 25 to 30 of my classmates in, in a much better way, because we spent two weeks, two and a half weeks traveling together. So that was a, a serious highlight of my FUQA experience. And if someone were to ask me what my top FUQA memory is, it, it might I might have to say gate. That's, yeah. Yeah, I did a more unofficial type of trip over spring break last year, um, Columbia Treks. So there are a few smaller treks that are like student-led trips. Some of them happen year to year. So for example, the Israeli students lead iTrek every year, similar with the Japanese students doing JTrek. Um, Columbia Trek was just someone in my class who had an experience um, you know, leading tour groups there and just kind of got a group of about 15 of us together and led the most amazing trip I've ever been on in my life, which was also a highlight of my FUQA experience. I think everyone would say that traveling with your classmates uh, in this unique period of your life is just one of the best and most interesting and most fun things you can do. So I uh, highly recommend something like that and definitely plan on doing similar uh, traveling this year. I know in addition to the gate uh, class opportunity, as I mentioned before, the FUGA Client Consulting Practicum, FCCP, which I believe is six credits, so you do it all throughout um, the spring of your first year. Um, I didn't have a, an international client. Mine was um, on the West Coast, but many of them are international clients, and they work on these various projects across, you know, whether it's social impact work, um, you know, energy work, finance, healthcare. I mean, they span really uh, a range of industries, but um, uh, many of them work on their projects for a few months and then go there and visit the client and work with them uh, in person over spring break and then come back and return here and finish the project. So I heard a lot of uh, great feedback and great stories on those types of projects. Yeah, and yeah. traveling is just, I mean, people are traveling all the time here. Yeah. And I remember over spring break last year, I remember opening up Facebook and looking at my feed, oh, and you crazy. scroll down and everyone is Some literally all over the world. All over the world. Yeah. And in places that you've predominantly only seen, you know, in movies or what have you, and people just go everywhere. It's like Fuqua just scatters. And one of the cool things that we do right before fall break or winter break or spring break is they put up a map in the in our what's called our, our student center, which is called the Fox Center. They'll put up a map and everyone can write in where they're going. And so you have this global map where the whole, the whole world is just populated with where people are going. Um, for example, this winter break, I'm currently planning a trip to South America, really want to go to Patagonia, and some of the people on the trip are going to Antarctica. And I haven't decided if I'm going to pull the trigger yet or not, but that just kind of gives you an idea that you know we're we're a very global global group of people. Okay, um, so could you talk about how you formed your long term goals? Um, is there any research you'd recommend to help shape them? Um, Are you thinking about I can, that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think for me it was that period of like setting my short and long term goals was like. A period of like introspection for me to just you know, figure out what I was passionate about. That when I pictured myself in five years, ten years, what what do I see myself doing and being happy doing? Um, so I was just basically thinking around those moments where um, I'm super excited, I'm super passionate about something, and how do I make a career out of it, basically? Um, so that was it for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> similar <laughs> thoughts on that. Yeah, I think. Um, you know, mine kind of involved more of an intersection of, you know, sectors and type of work. And I think that's, you know, I was reflecting in the same way about what matters to me, what I'm passionate about, and, you know, kind of pulling together what I've done in my past and what kind of connects those things to what I'd like to do immediately after business school and how that will all kind of sh shape and connect into something that's going to have a larger impact and, and be a more meaningful, um, like, long-term career plan for me. Um, I know that's very, it's very specific kind of to what, what you're thinking. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, and it's and it's a hard thing to do, right? Yeah. To say, yeah. what do I want to be long term? And I think that it's you don't necessarily need to know. I need I want to work at X company and be CEO or VP, etc. But I think you know really understanding what drives you. And for me, that was working with people and understanding people. And I come from a psychology background, and so I really was just kind of breaking down what what am I fundamentally interested in, and then how do I make a career after that. So coming from human capital consulting, marketing is technically I'm a career switcher, but when it boils down to it, it's all about people. It's all about understanding people, and marketing is just understanding people through a different um, through a different career path. So I think for you know as you're kind of thinking about these things, you know really kind of breaking it down to the bare bones and then building that back up is kind of how it was my approach for really thinking about what am I what am I interested in and how do I make a career out of that? Okay. Do one or two more? Yeah. So um, next question is, what is it like to pursue an MBA coming from a non-traditional background? Um, any advice or recommendations on that? Yeah, I'll um, start because, so I, I majored in international relations and psychology and then I worked uh, for the US government and then for a foreign government. Um, so I didn't, and then I did work for like a startup, but it, I'd never had any real like corporate business experience or business classes in undergrad. Um, and it's fine. Don't worry. Yeah. Like you're, everyone's gonna be fine. You know, I had the same concerns. And you know, you get here, and it's really nice to have this. Uh, the first year start with like a month long, I, I guess, GIE program, like global institute. institutions, and yeah, it's a global institute. So you really have a month to like get to know your peers and take two classes that. Um, one of them is leadership, ethics, and organizations. The other is global uh, institutions. So, you know, it might be classes that, at least for me, were more similar to the kind of classes I had taken in my past. Uh, one of them, the Leo class is kind of like you know, a lot of like behavioral psychology and behavioral economics. And the other class is, you know, more on the global economics and stuff that maybe, you know, many of us ha have learned about and read about. So uh, it was nice easing back into the academic environment with classes like that that might connect with some of those people from non-business backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, you jump right in to the quant heavy classes, but there are so many resources here for anyone who is feeling behind or confused. I mean, there's just like constant, um, you know, tutoring sessions and, you know, private tutor opportunities and just like. It's very hard to fail. Yeah, very, <laughs> very hard. Very hard. Very <laughs> hard. And there's so many resources to help if you feel like you want extra help with anything. Yeah, and as far as a, through a recruiting lens, so I came from like human capital consulting going into marketing and definitely a career switcher as we call them. And what I learned is that it really doesn't matter what your background is because you got into business school. You have the technical skills, you have the capabilities to learn. And that's what's really most important. And then I think they can teach you the technical stuff, but it's, a lot of it is just emotional intelligence. It's being able to you know, have conversations with people and being, being a human, and they can teach you all of the technical things. And a lot of what we do in brand management is a lot of the data analytics, you can't really take a class on it and you have to learn it on the job anyway. So they know that. And as long as you have kind of the strategic and analytical capabilities, they'll teach you everything you need to know. So it really, they don't mind that you come from, and for Jenna who went into consulting, yeah. you know, she didn't have a, and even Susan who <laughs> came from, you know, brand and went into healthcare, you know, all of us are career switchers actually. Yeah. So it really, it's very feasible and sometimes you feel like you're a salmon swimming upstream, but in reality, you come back to business school mostly to switch careers. That's what a lot of our peers are doing. And so um, it is, it's not as difficult or, into, and. I guess on the academic plug too, I came from a liberal arts background. I went to Colgate University, never took an accounting or finance class in my life. And I panicked last year, like really <laughs> panicked. And I ended up doing so much better in these classes than I thought I would. Some I didn't do as well in just because I had no clue what was going on, but that's okay too. But I totally survived and you will too. And it's, it's so much easier than you think it's gonna be. And you're not on your own. You know, you start initially with this, you know, team of a, right. like six people. So really, all of your core classes, you're working so closely with this team of like amazing, diverse people from all over the world and different backgrounds. Um, and you, you know, so much of your experience here is built on like sitting in a team room with them and working through your homework and your assignments and your cases together. Yeah. Um, and it really it helps. You know, you learn better and kind of it make. It's a reminder that you have this constant support um, from. Yeah you know, a variety of team members who, who have uh, different experience. Exactly. Okay, we're gonna take um, just a few couple questions to round off. 
So do you have any advice for the interview part of the application? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, Y'all are the experts here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can I can start this one. So I'm um Susan and I are both admissions fellows and um I'm the admissions fellow coordinator, yeah. which yeah. It, it means that I, I oversee kind of the whole process. So um, I think the first thing is, you know, it kind of goes on to like what I was just talking about, emotional intelligence. We want to see your true self. And the point is not to ask you questions that are going to stump you and make you, you know, sit there in a pile of sweat freaking out. It really is to just get to know you. What I love to see when I interview someone is I love to see someone who's passionate about Fuqua because we want to pick people who are coming into coming in next year who are carrying our torch. And you know, all three of us are so in love with this school, which is why we're overextended. And we want to pick people who are going to fill those shoes. And the first, you know, the first years now are definitely like living up to that, um, living up to that expectation. And they're all super engaged, super involved. And so it really is up to our second years um, as admissions fellows to help pick people who are going to really carry that torch as well. So um, you know, definitely, definitely understand why you're why you're applying to come here. Understand why why Fuqua is a school that's a good fit for you. And I think that really is something that really resonates with me as I interview folks. And then otherwise, I just think, and this is going to sound so cheesy, but really be yourself because that's a huge indicator for us, and that's what we want to see who you are and what value you can add to our program. Yeah. Um, to add on to that, like Fuqua is very team driven. Um, so I mean, also reflect and, and understand what kind of environment in which you thrive. Um, so if you know, working in teams is what's for you, then this is the place for you basically. Mm -hmm. And so play that up in your interviews. Um, just show how you worked in teams and um, thrived in those teams and how you can contribute to teams here. Yeah, and just remember, all your interviews are with second year students. We don't have anyone from the admissions team really doing them except on kind of a one-off basis. So we've all been in your shoes. We've been there and we've actually probably also had an interview recently for regular regular jobs. So we know what it feels like and the point is really not to make you feel anxious. And you know, I think I'll, I'll sometimes you know, ask, ask just fun, fun questions just to kind of get to know you better. And so I think don't never panic about the FUQA interview. <laughs> it really should be a conversation that's getting to know you better and seeing how you'd fit into our program overall. Um, so one more. final question. Final question. Um, so someone, I think someone from Colombia has joined the call. So nice that you like Welcome. Colombia. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> uh, so what support does FUQA provide for finding an internship and understanding the internship Internship search process. So much support. All the support. <laughs> All the support. Yeah. Constant support. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, it's just really built into the whole experience from, you know, you, you get some time here before all of that starts, but it, the program is so well designed and well run at this point, and it, it's all kind of, you're guided through it at the timing when everything's appropriate, so you're not slammed at the beginning. They kind of take you through step by step. The whole process um, and various types of industries recruit in different ways and even if you're looking at opportunities that don't recruit on campus um, whether international or different fields or startups or you know venture capital or anything you know there are resources through the school that are you know have an expertise in that area and are you know responsible for offering support and guidance um, you know officially and then second years do it unofficially all the time too. So there's a lot. Yeah, and we ha we have a formal career center which will set you up with all the resources you need. And just as like a personal anecdote, I came into Fuqua not knowing what brand management was, and I <laughs> kid you not, I had no idea what CPG meant. And someone had said it to me, and I was like, I'm sorry, what happened? <laughs> like, and I ended up at one of the bigger CPG companies for the summer. So that just kind of goes to show how you are well equipped with the right resources to figure out, you know, what what company is a good fit for you. And it can feel like drinking from a fire hose because, like we said, you know, Fortune 500 companies are coming onto campus to talk to you, and they're looking. They love Fuqua. Recruiters love Fuqua, and they always tell. Like I remember them always saying last year, "We love Fuqua because you guys are just so cool, and you're so involved, and you're so engaged. You all work on teams, and like we love that." And and also, you're very, very smart. So um, <laughs> I'm like, thanks. That's true. Um, anyway, so you just you really are set up with all the right resources to succeed in your internship and to secure one in general. Yeah, and to add on to that, uh, most of the um, 
people who come on campus to recruit are alumni, people who've gone through the process mm -hmm. you are just going through. So they are very, very empathetic to the process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so they are not, they're also not trying to freak you out. They are very supportive and, you know, um, and are also here to help you through the process, basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think that's all the time we have today. Um, I'm pretty sure our information will be out there after this, so feel free to reach out to any of us if you have more questions. Yeah, or um, if we're not the right people to talk to you, we're, we, we I, connect, connect you. I connect you yeah. to people all the time, yeah. so I'm happy to do that as well, and these two ladies are too. Yeah. 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 So thank you once thank again you. for joining us. We had fun talking to you tonight. Yeah, this uh, is great. <laughs> and Thanks. hopefully see you at Weekend for Women. Yeah. Yay! <laughs>